Tell us your name, what you're running for, and what experience do you have that makes you feel prepared to fill this position? My name is Tracy DeBrule. I am running for Buncombe County Sheriff again. <laughs> um, I'm a 12 year U.S. Marine from headquarters, Blood Armor Recon. Um, some of the little things I think that's prepared me for this. Uh, my first job at Reynolds, 14 years old, I was the janitor. And uh, when you go around and you're always the guy cleaning up after others' messes, and it seems to circumvent that that's what Sheriff kind of is. <laughs> um, the, uh, I've trained under the, some of the most elite. Um, we've developed programs, um, and some of them can be very lucrative to the county that I'm actually trying to, and that's why you see me running for Congress and Sheriff, is because, and it don't have to necessarily be done through Sheriff. I've actually sent business proposals to people like Richard Branson and stuff like that, uh, because I see with a B in front of it, we could actually put filter through Buncombe County, and if you know what that'll do for uh, you know county jobs, and it does have to be done through a command position. Um, anybody can sit on the outside and say, "Hey, this is what we're supposed to do." The meat and potatoes actually comes getting into it. Wonderful. What are your feelings on the 1.75 million dollar county grant to reduce jail populations, which to some seems to be the root cause of recidivism in the county? Some claim the magistrates won't keep people in jail because of that process. How would you do things differently when it comes to that program? You know, they used to not have all these problems. <laughs> uh, there was a magistrate by the name of Otto DeBrule <laughs> when they didn't have all these problems. Um, part of me being third party and one of the main factors is to get away from what is limitedness and what is controlling um, the way things are done, just like y'all saw when the, the last sheriff took up place. First thing he does is a political hey, we're gonna release all these people and the illegal immigrants. And what happened right off the bat, one of them had, was a detainee that the FBI was looking for, and there was another victim made in between that first week. Um, so as far as the $1.75 million grant, uh, do you, what would you do differently? If you're looking at things from the business perspective, uh, I was the field coordinator for our, our nation's largest landowner, Travel Crow Jones Land itself. Uh, I was in the logistics field. If you're looking at it from my perspective, 1.75 million, whatever grants and loans and stuff they're looking at is really um, a meaningless number when it comes to the fact that I'm actually looking at putting money being made in-house. Um, then we decide what we do with it. Right. Is the issue surrounding low bail and the regular occurrence of criminals getting out with a slap on the wrist and general lack of criminalization when it's clearly warranted, in fact, the fault of the magistrate? judges and DA, or is it truthfully because the jail is short-staffed? We have 400 officers. Uh, there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty of staff. Um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> so where does um, the issue of low bail and the criminals getting out uh, with a slap on the wrist, where does that, where's the source of that? We still got people, you know, weed's still illegal. Uh, you still got a lot of things where you have, and, and, and it's, it's kind of twisted because what we're always seeing is the victimless stuff, and, and those are the ones getting drugged back and forth in and out of the system, and then you got the people doing these really hard things, and they turn around and say, okay, and they're sitting, you know, waiting for a year of court at home. You know, we got things backwards is the best to put it. Um, I've been through the system, uh, as many of y'all know, when I first spoke up, they the powers that be were not grateful. Um, and inside the jail, actually, many of y'all remember the Lee sister shooting at the old strip club, all right? That guy's, that son-in-law, the one that shot up his mom, uh, stepdad, and his girlfriend, he met his meth dealer in d -Dorm. I was sitting right there beside him, and this sweet little innocent kid, and then this one dude that kept locked up, and I'll tell you what it was, is uh, Haley Wilson, uh, the, the had some of the families we was growing with. Um, she started dating this dude, she OD'd. Um, they didn't have enough to keep him locked up, but they did, kept him locked up for a year, waiting on stuff, dragging things out, because they were gonna do something to him no matter what, even if they didn't have a case. Now, the, the, the thing is, if they would've turned around and did what was right and followed on, on the law end of it instead of the, the, the vindictive part, then you wouldn't have had that situation you wouldn't have had the little, the little innocent kid that met his meth dealer that geeks out and shoots his, his family up. You would not have had that situation ever. It, it would have cut it off before it ever started it could have been considered. Um, as long as you're dealing with, 
you know, when you're seeing more single fathers, you know, drugging the child support, they're in and out of the system more than the people that are actually robbing people and, and, and causing physical harm to others, you know. Um, what do you think is the most effective way to deal with low-level drug offenders? First of all, we need to separate what we consider drugs. You know, being sponsored by the North Carolina hemp industry, you know, we're seeing how much that is opening up the door to combat opioids. Uh, out west, you're seeing as they're opening up the cytosine studies and stuff like that. It's opening up the doors, and and that's my. Let's focus on the big things when it comes to drugs: meth, heroin, crack. Well, let, let's target the things, and if we can use weed to get rid of heroin, oh, and fentanyl. Whoever can tam up with that. If we can use weed to get rid of that, if we can use silence, you know, anything to limit the ones that are creating the, the mass addiction. And those are the ones where people geek out and do things violent to others. So. What do you see as the most pressing issues in Asheville, Buncombe County? What are the root causes? And how will you make changes to better the safety and crime in our communities, especially considering everyone is so understaffed? In the Marines, we were always understaffed. That's why you asked me that question. I, I kind of blurt that blitzed out at first, like, understaffed my butt. You know, I never had 400 Marines to work with. I, my platoons were used about 50 or, you know, 250, you know. Um, and we were always outnumbered in what we were doing. Um, but we're always renowned as the most successful. And it's not because of, you know, Marine Corps theology. I would prefer have one good Marine than, than well, for, for lack of better terms, 10 that are not, <laughs> you know. Um, we've got the people. We've, and for all the officers out there, I'm not gonna turn around and come in and, and fire all the Democrats and then hire all the Libertarians. I'm not gonna do like the Democrats, Republicans do. It's, I'm actually gonna keep what the tools I have to work with. Um, we're gonna start in a, a very unique training phase um, afterwards, and it depends on the officers themselves. I will be very directly involved uh, and supervision role of it as they grow into and it's all stuff actually that I went through myself um, You'll notice I don't ever carry. I don't carry weapons. I'm not a big advocate for firearms I do believe they have a purpose in keeping us as a free nation um, God bless the Ukrainians that are armed right now, <laughs> you know um, It's uh, they're gonna start some training and yeah, there will be some who can't handle it uh, Marine Corps, the retrition ratio was roughly one third. You've seen with uh, Chief Zach, <laughs> 75 officers, first bat. Hey, we're doing a we're going to change things, and uh, that's what's going to happen. Uh, I'll introduce the training to them. There's some equipment and stuff uh, that I will actually be developing. It'll be the one of one for our county. Under North Carolina law that governs nuisance areas, are you willing to enforce those laws? <sighs> any any area you can you can label. Um, well, they're targeting, and, and I'm assuming this comes to the, 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 the meth areas and the homeless areas, and sometimes they run close together. Uh, I put in, and I did put in for the Asheville City's homeless coordinator. I'm, I do work with the uh, uh, Haywood congregation for five years nearly. I, I was in the kitchen every day. Uh, you know, it's um, the, on that aspect, and what I put on my proposal to the city is the first thing I'm gonna offer is a band-aid to, to help the small business owners be able to have their clean areas is the light, uh, a location that we can actually bring the homeless to the area. Um, and it'll be in a supervised area uh, or an area we, we will have be able to supervise and control and pay attention to what's going on. The heroin and stuff, because you see it going through those areas, uh, <clears throat> When we first had to, move, when we was remodeling the bathrooms, we had to bring porta potties in. They quickly started being called briar patches, because you know, um, with us being able to actually see that, and what most people don't realize, and this is a little recon 101 marine for you. Here we got the the product that is killing our people, and we know where it's at, or we have a way of knowing where it's at, and helping those that are that are the addicts. When if we do that, it's going to lead us straight to the source. Can you answer calls inside the city limits? Considering APD has such a shortage, are you willing to have your deputies help city PD answer calls for service if county isn't backed up at the time? Uh, when, uh, when I become our sheriff, uh, I highly look forward to working with Chief Zach. Um, 
I was actually trying to get his job when I first met him and put in with the, the city because for me, like I said, it's just having that, uh, I was already on that path to be a gunny sergeant. Already had these developments and stuff that I was going to initiate anyway. And when I spoke up, uh, there, well, let's face it, cops retaliate, politics retaliate. It's the, the way their systems train them to, to be um, in order to break those bad habits. Um, so you would partner with APD and offer support? I don't want to give away exactly the format I want to use. Okay. I don't want to sit down and say, this is exactly what I'm going to do because I may have to try again in four years. Uh, I was this close last time and you saw what happened. Yeah, that's fair. Being short-staffed at APD and Sheriff's Department are, and losing staff to other places like Henderson County, what are you going to do as a sheriff to get more deputies on the road and inside the jail? What is your goal and guidelines when recruiting deputies to work at the Sheriff's Office? Uh, first of all, you talk Henderson, uh, I gotta say, uh, Rest in peace to Ryan Hendricks. Um, that was one of my Lance Corporals when I left Ammo Company. Um, little babies, uh, they, they got a good crew out there and all that. And I understand people, um, there's things that have been going on uh, as far as the, the trading system. Um, for instance, uh, when Greg Newman threw one of his client's cases, um, the uh, DA that helped him do so, or ADA that helped him do so. Uh, as soon as he got fired here for playing dirty, they hired him on there and then brought him back. <laughs> um, uh, thank God the ADA is not running for her. <laughs> but yeah, um, the uh, the recruitment, uh, the recruiting is not going to be an issue. Um, I've got places to pull staff. Um, well, I'll tell you, I'll give you, I'll give you a little insider. When I was actually trying to be, uh, APD was heavy on trying to recruit me. I wanted AFD. I'd actually was second in line to get hired is when I got deployed. Um, I know some of the MMA fighters and stuff I've trained with or, or EMS and stuff. Uh, I know these guys, I know the community. If we need people, I'm simply gonna go down to uh, some of my friends and say, hey guys, um, one of the best officers we got that I saw within my time dealing with the system is now sitting down at the, um, uh, with the Health and Human Services Department. And uh, I've asked him a couple times, would you ever come back? Uh, I've been laying the groundwork for if I do need officers, but I don't think I'm gonna need to. Uh, I would dare say we could operate with less and get more performance. Um, with the shortage in the jail that is requiring road office to work jail and manning levels being dangerously low, what are your plans on bringing the manning level up to the required state level? I think state levels are low. <laughs> I think everything Roy Cooper's had his hands on is subpar. Um, we're going to introduce something, and uh, I'm going to be training my officers. I'm not going to depend on BLAT to do it for it. Actually, let's face it, the issues that we have at APD, their instructor, Captain Daryl Fisher, it was, or Major Daryl Fisher at Buncombe County Sheriff was Captain Daryl Fisher at APD. That's Quentin Miller's, so the tra subpar training that they were getting, no, I am not gonna leave that to them. I will be training my own. And uh, Billy Wicks, my coach, was a retired training officer, and the one flaw he noticed and why they did not introduce some of the these developments that have helped me create what I'm trying to introduce. Um, Pops turned around and said the problem was once they got it in one college, they had to reinvent the wheel to go to the next. And uh, that's why it never took Sprout. And they made the comment turn around. He said, well, I said, Pops, why didn't you just become the boss and tell them? And he said, uh, son, I'm too old now, why don't you? Um, okay, so we finished up the interview, but before we go, do you want to give us a final thought? We've got about a minute left. Uh, yeah, that was less than 14 questions. <laughs> So I'm getting more in the mail. <laughs> yes, I will send you the rest of these questions to respond to, uh, and we'll post those up for you. Okay, well, I'm a total nerd. Uh, as much as I sit behind these cameras and do this myself, I'm, I've never come comfortable in front of, you know, that whole heartbeat thing the whole time, doop, 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 you know. Uh, it's just part of the job. Um, as far as where you will find me at my most comfortable and where I'd always set my, this is who I'm going to be, 
was out with my Marines. And that's gonna be the same thing with the sheriff, is gonna be out there, you know, with these officers. We've got some good officers, and they've been handicapped by, and you look at the, the roots of it. We need the security. Hey, my cousin Bubba's a big old boy. Won't you guard the door? And that is what sprouted American sheriffism. So along the way, you had brilliant minds that have surrounded said, we need to be doing this. And the problem they found is, oh, they hit, hit a, like I told you about Pops, he hit a rock wall when it came to introducing it. And since then, what I've noticed the hardest part is getting through the politics because everything I'm saying right now, don't think there's not somebody on the left and right sitting there saying, can we use that? How can we turn that against them? How can we turn that for us? And that is what this game is. And sadly, it shouldn't be a game. Um, I've been here from the start to finish, and I, I do want to throw a real quick thing out there. The byproduct, and when it first happened to me, I was held down to beat by the cops, severely. I ran for county commission, I spoke up on the evidence room audit, and y'all all saw that we've been through chief after chief after chief, and, and there was a tug of war going on within the department to where, and it was there are people that, hey, I want that position. I was part of the trouble, what I gotta do to get that position? Well, maybe one of them ran for sheriff or something, who knows, but <laughs> the fact of the matter is, the byproduct, and this young lady going through her third brain surgery, we have not heard, we have not heard no contact from whatsoever. She's a 36-year-old single mother and couldn't even remember the name of her son. What they were doing and the tactics our cops were using, when they did it to me, they knocked on the door claiming mom was hurt. I opened the door, they dragged me face down to the ground, hold me in an arm bar on this side. You cannot go the opposite direction where your elbow don't want to go. I was pinned at that point. The other officer on this side, I thought he was doing a key lock on the arm, which was arm and nipple flesh and it's painful and all that. But actually what was going on is he had his knee on my elbow and his other hand pinned the other side of my arm while he used his strong arm. And I thought he was trying to choke me. He's holding me cheek down on the ground. So the largest could kick me in the back of the head. Soft spot repeatedly. Everything we know from the NFL studies that this is where you don't want to get hit. You can handle this because this is the hard part. But the jelly part here, the brain smashing skull, and it goes back to Phineas Gage studies. Um, and that's where I, I used to not be awkward around people. It's the funny part. I'd pick learn a song overnight. Um, it's sad the talents it took away. Another one I'll share you, and I think the best way to hide it is Facebook, just so you can see right here the toe print of the boot. Mm -hmm. This happened eight months after they beat me. This happened last September. And the even freakier part is cops know that their cartridges are tracked, just like, just like when they fire a weapon in, in duty. They turn around, they actually had a cattle prod they were shocking me with. They were that trained in, in how to get around the law and, and to punish their, but that's what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna stop this crap. This shit, this stuff should have never happened. Excuse my <laughs> um, Thank y'all. Thank you very much, I appreciate your time.